Okay, let's go to the farm. You know, that, as far as I'm concerned, that is just a dynamite uh, situation, situation there. And uh, basically, because of the road here, it's not quite rectangular. Now, the situation down there, and we, you and I hunted that last year, and I'm going to try and draw it from memory, and you tell me what you guys have been seeing in there. But basically, um, you've got the farm down in here with the fields, and then it goes up a timbered hillside, and then you've got houses. It's a subdivision. And so basically, you've got a funnel situation here that is just... It's a gimme. I mean, they're, you know, they'll feed in the yards in, at night, um, especially the does, and you know that this is the funnel. It's going to force the deer to go along this edge if that's what they're doing. Also, if there's a lot of does in here, these bucks are going to be coming somewhere in here because this is a honey hole. This is where you pick up this, the ladies. This is all about 30 acres. Just yeah. Okay, and that roughly the, the house is here, yeah. and your trees are about like this and then you've got one tree line going this way you've got another little meadow and then this last year that was hot I made two scrapes here I made one right here basically on this trail that we hunted last year you remember oh yeah I guess so <laughs> in case you know a buck didn't hit the scrape so that we at least pick up, you know, doe tracks going through here to see if, w what kind of traffic is coming through. The other one's over here. And as you can see... Nothing. You know, tell me what you see, pal, because I've been up here working these scrapes, dressing them from the time you told me to. I marked it in my day planner in October. And we've been up here religiously dressing these scrapes and checking for sign. You know, it, I see this all the time in western Montana where I live, eastern Montana where I hunt, and even down south where we do our bow hunting schools, you got a situation here where for some reason, and maybe no reason, I mean, maybe dogs didn't do it, uh, a neighbor kid with a BB gun didn't scare them away, they just stopped using a trail. Because I had, what, 30 does and fawns under me here the first morning last year? I mean, Shoot, we, we I see you've got- in six bucks. Yeah, and you've got the stand up there, but you know what, basically haul it down. Or wait and see if you get any. You got a late season in January, yeah, right? After Christmas. Well, you may get a, a resurgence of, of use of this, but this is a classic example where something that should work. I mean, because they were hammering the heck out of this last year. Oh, I had 40, 40 plus whitetails come under me in that stand last year in October. And, and you just, and I were here, what, six bucks we had come into us in one yeah. day, and here we rattled and grunted them in. Yeah, it's just one of those things. Uh, you've got the hot spot down there, and my guess is, because we know this property, I'll be willing to bet you that we need to go to the very opposite end. Since your stand's about in the middle and this is on this end, you may find that there's a trail coming in there because these deer are using this. But for some, maybe the lead doe just decided, hey, guys, we're not going that way this year. I mean, there's no rhyme or reason to some of it. And there may be somebody down here has a Labrador or something that's chasing deer, and the deer just avoid it. Maybe what we ought to do is check the other end of the property down there and see yeah. what's going on. Do down it. There. That's scouting, and if you don't scout, you don't get good bucks. Yeah. No question about it. Let's go check it out. Okay. Well, now, what have you guys been seeing in here? Well, I'll tell you, there's one, there's one more brush line right here that runs up, if you'll remember. It runs here, and if you remember last year where we had the centerfold stand. Mm -hmm. that, where that big that scrape, scrape was? Well, it's back. It's They're hitting it hard again. Really? Yep. And w we put the stand up. In fact, Aaron went in and put the stand up three, four weeks ago. And that scrape is hit hard, and there's a lot of traffic coming into the scrape from the fields. And what they do is they run right up this brush line and come right into the scrape. And it stands right here, and they just go right into it. And they come in from here. They come in from here. They all come in to the, hit this scrape. This is the same scrape from last year. Boy, he's got that big dot pretty nice. Yeah, there's, look, there's, a, there's a big print right in there. And there's fresh scrape marks, too. And you can tell the dirt's down here. So he came up this way and hit this thing. There's droppings in here. See where he yeah. hit that tree over there? See the little rub? Yeah. He broke that twig off there. You always find piles of droppings in and around the scrape, too. Let me show you a couple things about treating these scrapes. 
you can really, really light this buck up. And I can do the same thing with mock scrapes. It's critical to wear boots like we've got on. Absolutely critical never to step in the scrape. But don't ever come near a scrape with leather boots or Gore-Tex or any of that stuff because it carries odor. Okay, let me show you what to do with a scrape. I'm using the James Valley rut lure. The rut is so close that it's a toss up between wall hanger and rut lure. Break off a stick, but don't touch the end that you're gonna use to apply it to the scrape. And you just want, this stuff is real thick, so you want at least one or two good drops right in there. Okay, now, just rub a little here. Because this is his licking branches. This is where he's taking his horns and gnarling it, and this is where he's rubbing his preorbital gland and licking. And this, you know, if you can get in here middle of the day, you got a real plus here where so many people around walking yeah. dogs and stuff. You don't have to be, you know, like we're not in camo, we're not sneaking around, because it's normal to have this kind of incursion. Get in here about middle of the day and treat the scrape every day, because what's going to happen in the next six or eight days, the first of these does is going to start to cycle in. This is going to be a real center of action. Once most of the does are in and a bunch are bred, the scrape will mean virtually nothing. He'll just be right on the does. But uh -huh. this is the pickup point for, let's just say, 10 really great days until it all happens. Mm -hmm. And that's a real good stand choice up there. You're wearing some skyline type. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that'll work just perfectly. Um, you, you know, really, you should have somebody smaller sit this stand. I will. As soon as I kill him, you can sit in the stand. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's split. Let's get out of here. Let's okay. check those other scrapes. All right.